This is the B-Link SE i14. Features an Intel Core 5 125H, which has 14 cores and 18 threads. It also boosts up to 4.5 gigahertz. It comes in this very nice sleek looking case, almost similar to like a Mac mini, and has a bunch of different expansion ports, as well as the ability to add an external graphics card via the Thunderbolt port, which is kind of mislabeled as a USB-C. In today's video, we're going to talk about its performance. We're also going to throw it up against some games. We're going to see how well it performs in those. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the IO and the importance of expandability. We're also going to tear it down and see how easy it is to upgrade. It looks like luckily you have a lot of upgrade options when it comes to this mini PC. Specifically up top here, if we view this, you can clearly see that we have two expandable RAM slots as well as an SD slot with a heat sink as well, which actually is really cool. It looks like you've even got some conductive heating there and it looks like you even have the ability to throw in another M.2 slot in there as well, which is really good. So overall, very pleasantly surprised with this. It looks like it's very adequately cooled. The majority of it, you can see the other side of the fan right there. So very easily upgraded. I'd give it a pretty solid result, specifically also with having a Thunderbolt port on the back. Even though it's not labeled that, it works with an external graphics card. So you've got a lot of upgradability as well as a lot of options and very adequate cooling in here as well. So another thing too is usually volume is quite important. Specifically this PC, I actually ended up gaming for a good bit and really couldn't notice the volume. I think that this does a really good job with having a pretty adequate cooler. This is a mid-range processor for the mobile uh, laptop slash like mini PC area. So it definitely is not ridiculously loud. And as we saw when we did our teardown, it's a pretty solid chunk that is actually dedicated for the cooler. So volume was not really as much of an issue as it has been on some other mini PCs. Temperature wasn't really an issue. I saw about like 70 degrees really pushing it. I'm not even gonna bother with blowing out benchmarks for that. The cooling on this is adequate. I hate to say that, but there has been some other mini pieces that have completely annihilated cooling. No issues with cooling on there from just a visual inspection. When we actually did take this out and play some games in it, obviously the onboard graphics are not going to cut it. Specifically, Intel still is slightly lacking even with their Arc graphics system, whereas AMD with their APUs are just a little bit more potent. However, you do have the option with that direct Thunderbolt port now to go through and add an external graphics card. I think it's a great option if you buy this mini PC for your family, per se, and your kids want to go through and add a graphics card to play games on it. It's just a quick, easy addition. You don't even have to take anything apart. You assemble something, and it's really good and easy to use. However, let's also talk about the performance without an external graphics card, because for a majority of the people buying this, they're not going to have that. So I first started with playing Fortnite, which is, again, a popular game that kids might want to play. And it got about 30 FPS in normal settings, medium settings. And if you crank that down, you get closer to 45. Now this wasn't with anything fancy, any ray tracing, etc. However, I think the thing that bothered me most was not necessarily that the frame rate was rather low, but that there was a whole bunch of lag spikes in which points throughout the game when you're playing, specifically you're fighting people, etc., that you would just get a huge lag spike and it'd be difficult to move. In addition, I found certain times where the network was a little iffy. Um, the network maybe was like rough, it didn't work as well. Uh, I was jumping around some places. And again, this is a standard environment we test everything in. That really isn't a common issue. So I found it kind of weird that there was some issues with the network in that regard. On top of that, with the occasional lag spikes, it was very apparent that without a graphics card, it didn't do too hot. Next up, I tried Minecraft, and I think Minecraft is one of those games that, yes, it's gotten progressively less optimized and worse off, but I think this definitely, you could run some Minecraft in and not really have any issues. Um, yes, you might struggle a little bit uh, if you turn on some mods, shaders, etc. It's very clear that this is not like super crazy. Arguably, you could use this for Minecraft without much of an issue. I think it's very apparent that this would be fine. And I don't think you need an external graphics card if you had a kid that was playing Minecraft on this on the side and you wanted to use this for other like uh, browsing tasks, etc. I think you're more than fine. I think the point which I'd recommend a graphics card is probably where you bump up to something that's a little bit more serious than Fortnite or you just don't want the lag spikes associated with Fortnite because it's very apparent that this computer itself doesn't bottleneck anywhere other than the graphics itself. 
I think with the addition of that graphics card, it makes this a pretty solid mini PC. And I think even without it, you could get away with doing some pretty solid productivity tasks. This is priced around $650, I think up to $700 for this mini PC. And everything that I've seen inside and out really does indicate that it was really well designed. There's been some other mini PCs that we've looked at quite recently that have had some serious design issues. So it's been nice to see that there isn't really anything potent that like, jumps out at me. I think the processor is good in here. I think the upgradability is good and what this comes with out of the box is also really solid. If you're interested in checking out some of the other mini PC reviews, I'll leave links to those down in the description. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you next time. Goodbye.